Hey there, Bixby developers. Today, we will be going over the upgraded training version 2.1. And in this quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to utilize training 2.1 to create your training examples. Training version 2.1 combines the best of both training version 1 and training version 2. For example, it retains the bulk edit features from training version 2, and it retains the tagging capabilities from training version 1. And we've also streamlined many parts of the training process. Let's take a quick look at the capsule that we'll be using for this example. Let's take a quick look at the capsule we'll be using for this tutorial. We can see that it is a simple capsule that provides you with a random baby name right now. And if we take a quick look at this API, we can see here that it can take a year, a letter, as well as a gender. And the API returns a random name based on those parameters. In order to access the training in your capsule, you'll need to go to your resources folder and then the proper folder where the training is stored in. In this case, right now I have a couple trainings in the EN folder, and we can see that there are only these two training examples. And this capsule is not able to handle any other additional inputs like the year, the gender, or whatever. So we're going to want to add some training examples that can handle that. Another thing we should take a quick look at is the JavaScript. We can see that it can take a name, it can take a year, it can take a gender, it can take a letter. Um, we won't be using the name for this example, but we will be using the year, gender, and letter. And we can see that if any of these variables are provided, there's some simple JavaScript that simply adds this parameter onto the end of the API call. So over here in our training ENUS, we're going to want to start to add some trainings. So let's go ahead and add our first training example using training 2.1. Just go over here to the ENUS training folder and click on that. And now we can click on this add button. And we're gonna start with a girl's name and then just click add. So here we have the gender concept already defined and it is an enum. And we can see that it either takes an M or an F. And over here in the vocab, we can see that we've already set some synonyms for the proper gendered letter. You can see that we have female for F, girl, male, boy, so on and so forth. And if we go back here, we're gonna to want to tag this with the proper gender. And here we have gender F. And then we're going to add our goal as get names, which is the main action that does this. We actually want to change this to just tag the girl portion of it and not the apostrophe S. So we can actually use the showed aligned NL to edit the code directly. And then we can move the apostrophe S outside of here so that way it no longer tags the apostrophe S. We can also see that this uh, graph thing is here again. So if you like this thing in the past, it is back and you're able to see how your training examples end up reaching the goal. So now let's keep adding a few trainings. We're going to want to add a training for a year. So we can do a name from 2018. And we just highlight this and tag this as the year. And we set our goal as get names. Click save. And why don't we actually test a couple of these? We can see here that it is indeed giving us a girl's name. And of course, we could have just gotten really lucky and it just kept giving us a girl's name. But we can also check the debugger really quick to make sure that it is properly grabbing it. And we can see here that it is indeed grabbing the female from the girl as the input. And now let's try the year. So a name from 2018. And if we reset this, why don't we try 2017? And we can see that it is now giving us names from 2017 or whatever year that we specify. There's a specific range of years that this capsule can handle but this video is not gonna be about handling cases outside of the years that it doesn't handle. It is simply for training examples. Let's continue on and add some more trainings. Let's do one for the letter. And we can just click add a name that starts with A. And A will be the letter. And 
The letters are also enums. Within my capsule, there are different ways to handle letters, but I personally like to use enums for that. And we can just do get names and click save. And now let's run this. We can see that it is indeed giving us names that start with A. So let's add a bit more complex of a training example, a name that starts with C from 2018. So now we can tag two separate concepts by clicking over it and click done. And then here we will tag this one with year. And finally, we will set our goal as get names. And let's add one last training example, a boy's name from 2016 that starts with M. So we're going to want to tag this one with the gender as male, this as the year, and finally this as the letter M. And we're going to do get names and save. So let's go ahead and double check that this works. And we can see here that even though it's working when we toss in the code like this, we can see that this says that the training is not learned yet. So, and that's actually because I forgot to remove the apostrophe S from what's tagged and move it outside. And that should fix it. There we go. So now let's do a girl's name from 2015 that starts with A. And of course, there is a very small possibility that it was pure coincidence, but we can see in the debugger that indeed. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more features in Training V2. The first one is the search. And I can search for any training that has the word name in it, or I can search for any training with different words in it, right? So like starts. And we can also use this filters, for example, to see what's learned, what's not learned. We can see the end goals as well. And we can see even the year, for example, letter or gender. So if we select one of these, we can see that here we have all the trainings that have a year specified in it. And here we have all the trainings that have a letter specified and also a gender specified. So this is very useful for quickly filtering through your training examples and just delete that to clear that out. And finally, you can delete training examples by hovering over this X and clicking it. Then you just click delete to delete it, but I'm not going to do that. And you can also disable a training example and it disappears. But we can just click these triple dots, click show disabled. There it is. And now we can re-enable it. And finally, you can see your different targets here. For example, here we have EN, ENUS. If you recall from earlier, I had these two training examples at the very beginning that are in the EN folder. So let's actually use the select all functionality and we're able to select all these trainings where we can either verify, delete, copy, or move them. But in this case, I'm going to want to move them over to the EN US target and just click move. Now we can see that all the training examples are in the EN US target instead of the base EN training. And lastly, in case you missed the original splash screen of Training V2, here it is. It's very similar, but a little bit different. You can, you can see your different targets. If you had more targets, they would be listed here, and you can see kind of a summary of all the training, the incomplete trainings, and also the rejected trainings, all right here. And just click back to go back to this screen. So there you go, a quick overview on how to utilize training version 2.1. It's a very powerful training interface that takes the best from training version 2 and training version 1 and puts them together. And yeah, that's it.